It has been a while since my last video in the Explained series and that for good reason. I mean there are only so many things worth dedicating an entire video to and when it comes to today's subject we're gonna take a bit of a detour as well. Usually I try to explain things with hard facts, pulling up things that developers said, drawing hopefully logical conclusions based on what I know of development processes and game design and so on. Today's video however is supposed to be a bit more of a guideline when it comes to role dedication in Overwatch, some players really like to get up in arms, suggesting that certain heroes are supposed to be in other categories, etc. But what I want to focus on today is trying to give you guys a bit of a foundation of knowledge, a rough idea of what you are supposed to do when picking up the mantle of each of the roles available in Overwatch. But remember, it is just that, a rough guideline. The more you play and the more time you dedicate to learning a specific hero, the sooner you'll learn that there are a lot of creative ways of making use of their abilities. Things and Overwatch are rarely as cut and dry as many videos make them out to be. In fact, being adaptive is a great skill to have. But since I'm only one person, I would like to encourage you guys to become part of this project. So if you want to share your expertise with other newcomers, drop down into the comment section below and let us know how you play your own main hero of choice in your rating to give others a point of reference to start from. But now, let's get cracking. When it comes to Overwatch, every role in the game is supposed to contribute to the machinery that is your team. In the most basic sense, it would work a little like this. Tanks create space and soak damage for the team. DPS heroes use that space to dish out damage and confirm kills. And support heroes make sure that everyone stays alive while doing so. If the supports fail to keep their frontline topped off, then the tanks won't be able to effectively create space, making it more difficult for the DPS players to find openings to get the kills they need. If the DPS players don't make use of the space that the tanks created, then the tanks are eventually going to fall victim to the opposition. And if the tanks are too passive, then that makes it very difficult for your team to engage in the first place. So in this basic structure, everyone needs to do their job properly or else everything falls apart. Now, naturally, the reality looks a little different. Making mistakes is only human and taking advantage of misplays is what usually decides a teamfight over something like a flawless execution of these basic principles. But again, we need some kind of point of reference to start from, so let's pick out some specific examples. Because as much as these basic jobs can be assigned to any other roles in the game, every hero specializes in different things, making them more or less suitable to do these things at any point in time. That's why we differentiate between main and off tank or healing versus utility focused supports and since I am a support player myself, let's start right there. What differentiates main and off healers is usually their healing output. Anna and Mercy are very clearly in the main healer category for that very reason. They dish out a ton of healing. Lucio, Zenyatta and Symmetra on the other hand are utility based supports or off supports. They specialize in bringing something to the table that no other hero can. Lucio has a speed boost, Zenyatta has a discord orb and Symmetra, well, her utility lays an area of denial. What you will notice is that all these supports have a lower healing output, but can do something else exceptionally well. For example, Zenyatta is more of a glorified DPS given how quickly he can melt his opposition. Lucio has unparalleled mobility that makes him one of the strongest 1v1 characters in this video game in the hands of a skilled player. And Symmetra... Well, she has a lock on microwave beam, which does a ton of damage. But when putting together a team, considering ultimates is also very important. Zenyatta and Lucio bring very powerful defensive ultimates to the table that often negate offensive ultimates coming from the enemies. Symmetra can make the entirety of your team tankier with her shield generator or bring them back to the point more quickly with her teleporter should your team end up dying. You might have noticed that I gracefully glanced over Moira so far, and that's because she's a bit of a hybrid. She has main healer potential with a left click allowing her healing per second to exceed anything any other hero can do outside of an ultimate if your team is stacking. And on single targets, well she can still match Anna. However, her healing output is limited to a resource which has to be replenished by doing damage with a right click and that is an inherent part of her playstyle. Her fade ability gives her a level of mobility that is only beaten by Lucio and her damage orb right click combo can melt 200 HP heroes in no time. Not only that, her ultimate is defensive and offensive at the same 
same time depending on who you aim it at, so she has a lot of versatility. When deciding which supports you want to put together, you have to consider what you are trying to achieve. Running Anna and Mercy might give you a lot of healing, but leaves you completely defenseless once the enemies are starting to pull their ultimates. Lucio and Zenyatta might be a great setup to support a very aggressive playstyle, however, should the first engagement fail and result in a drawn out teamfight, then their lack of sustain is going to be a problem. That's why you usually pair main and off support together to get sustain and utility. Naturally, there are certain compositions that benefit from different combinations, but that's another story for another day. What you have to understand in your job as a support is that, as a main healer, sustain is your priority, keeping everyone alive, whereas off supports often focus on dishing out damage and providing unique abilities to their team. Off supports are also in the responsibility to focus on getting their ultimates first and foremost to be able to defuse enemy ultimates when need be. Now let's take a look at the tanks next. The most obvious examples of a textbook tank will be Orisa and Reinhardt because they provide something that the other tanks don't an anchor in the form of their shield. That's why they're called anchor tanks. Your team can play around that shield to get reliable protection and try to do damage behind it. Other tanks have other priorities. Winston and D.Va are high mobility tanks that are often used to disrupt enemies' positioning. Both of their mobility-based abilities push enemies away, which can force them into a suboptimal position that allows your DPS to take them out. Of course, with D.Va's defense matrix and Winston's temporary barrier, they also have defensive abilities for the sake of soaking damage and providing protection. What every tank hero in this game can do is disrupt positioning to a certain extent, and that is their focus. Roadhog pulls an enemy with his hook, making them an easy target for your DPS. Reinhardt's main attack pushes the enemies around, creating space for your team. Orissa has a mini graviton surge, D.Va and Winston have the aforementioned mobility-based push abilities, and Zarya's right click can push enemies around as well. But they also all have defensive abilities. Reinhardt's and Orissa's shield, Winston's barrier, D.Va's defense Matrix, Roadhog making himself a meat shield while taking a breather, and Zarya with their protective barriers. All of their ultimates, with the exception of Orissa, also have some sort of crowd control effect. Roadhog pushes enemies away while melting them. Zarya pulls them all into one spot. Reinhardt straight up stuns them. Winston pushes them away, and Diva says, You either run or you blow up. Although these ultimates control enemy players by either incapacitating them or affecting their positioning. A tank's job, creating space and killing opportunities for their team. Now this is where we are supposed to be moving on to DPS heroes, but there's just so damn many of them. And I would lie if I said that I felt like I was the best source of advice when it comes to how to play DPS properly. I mean tank was already stretching it beyond just the basic idea of it. At this point I would hope that you can adapt what you learned so far throughout the video. Take a look at the ability set of your heroes of choice and find out what you can and should do with them rather than seeing all of your skills as this button kills people and this other button kills people differently. I mean we can go through a couple examples here. Projectile heroes are great for bulk damage like Farah and Junkrat. That's why I would call them breaker heroes because they make getting through shields easier and hitscan heroes like Soldier 76 and McCree are great for a precision based cleanup. There are also certain heroes that exceed and drawn out team fights thanks to their sustainability like Reaper with his Wraith form and main attack leech as well as close range damage burst. Then there's also flankers who exceed at picking off targets who are out of position thanks to their mobility like Genji and Tracer. A hero like Widowmaker or Hanzo relies on their pick potential to quickly create a scenario in which your team has a numerical advantage. But what you have to realize when you play heroes who operate away from the objective and away from the rest of their team like snipers and flankers is that you have to provide supreme levels of proficiency to make it work. Because naturally, your enemies are going to try to take out the players who are on the objective. With less bodies on the objective, because your widow is in the back and your tracer ran ahead trying to flank, that means that whatever remains of your team is going to have to soak more damage, putting them at a disadvantage. You also have to be aware that your job as a DPS is not throwing away your life to get a quick kill. You are the guy that is supposed to be pressuring the opposition. If you trade your life for a quick kill, then that is a huge disadvantage for your team, so staying alive is just as important. Never forget that no matter how many kills you get on your own, if you can do it, the enemies can do it too. Even if you trade 3 for 1, if you don't kill the right targets or you kill them too late 
or too early, those kills don't matter. Keep respawn advantages in mind, focus high priority targets and players who might have their ultimates. Focusing your fire together with the rest of your team will go a long way in melting the enemies down as quickly as possible. And I guess this concludes today's video on the job of every role in Overwatch. I know that some of these points are a bit more detailed than others, but do keep in mind that I'm just one person. There are only so many heroes that I am good at myself and all I'm trying to do here is give you a basic understanding of the game that helps you build your own proficiency from there. Anyway, thank you everybody so much for watching, don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you wanna see more and I hope to see you all next time.